really see that it's such a joy to be back with you today. The Lord is so amazing. I'm always so fascinated that how he, in the midst of whatever goes on, God is always drawn to the one, you know, that is hurting, the one that, is, that needs a touch from him. He's so amazing. It makes me think of Matthew chapter 9. Perhaps we can quickly go there, verse 35 to 38. Um, when Jesus, I mentioned it last night, he is, he's preaching, he's, he's teaching the gospel of the kingdom, he's healing sicknesses and diseases. Yes. And when all of that is going on, the Bible says, he turns and he sees a crowd. And he sees that they are weary. And that they are lost. And then the Bible says the following, verse 36. When he saw them, he was moved with compassion. So he spoke last night about love being the motive and the motivation for God sending Jesus to the world. What I like about this verse um, is it, it says he was moved on the inside with compassion, but at the same time, it also is indicative of what compassion will do to you as a person. It will move you into Amen. action. Amen. The definition of compassion is love in action. Love that has feet. Not only do we see the need, so this is what it says, he saw the crowd, but he was moved with compassion. In other words, he was moved to do something about their circumstance and their situation. That is why we did this weekend. It was not just enough to see people lost. He was moved so that he would take action to do something about their condition. And that is what the Lord is calling each one of us to do. And he said the following, verse 37 to 38. The harvest is few and the laborers are plentiful. Amen? No. No. Doesn't say that? No. Can I try uh, another version? <laughs> Okay, it says, the laborers are plentiful and the harvest is very few. In other words, there's not a lot of people who want to accept Jesus. And there's so many, many workers out there in the kingdom. Amen? There's not another version, an African version. So the problem is not for the harvest. Come on. We do not have a lack of people wanting to accept Christ as Savior. Sometimes in our own hearts and minds, as believers, we would think that, you know, and we hear, well, oh, the world is going to hell, what's happened to America? You know, judgment is coming, and all this kind of things. And they say, "Wow, you know, sin is just getting crazy, and sinners are just becoming more and more hardened in their hearts towards God." And that is the narrative that the enemy would like to spin to us, to keep us from going out and winning people for Jesus. Yeah. That is not what Jesus said. He said the problem is not with the harvest; the problem is with the laborers. And so here, the next verse is one of the areas if you wonder what is God's will concerning some part of your life, this is an area that you can absolutely know this is God's will for your life. And he says it's this. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers. That is a prayer that you and I can pray every day. God Send laborers into your harvest. The word send there in the Greek is not 
a passive word. It is a word that means thrust them, cast them, forcefully compel them to go out into the Holy Spirit. So that is the first thing that you and I can do concerning the state of the lost in the world today is pray. God sent laborers, not just here in America, but all over the world. Yes. Sent laborers in Jehovah's Hill. For a moment, this is close our eyes and begin to do that. Yes. Let's just ask God to send laborers. Yes. China, Pakistan, yes. Dubai, yes. Iraq, Iran, yes. third world countries, yes. North Korea, yes. Africa, here in America, there will be a third awakening of God moving in this nation. Latin America, Lord, Africa, send labels into your harvest when you pray. You can be on both sides of that prayer. You can be the one that God uses. His womb. He uses your spiritual womb. To birth laborers into the harvest field. So you contend for the harvest field. You say, God, there are people out there who need you. So I pray, mobilize people who are double minded, people who are not sure about whether they should become a missionary, whether they should go out. Lord, I just pray, move them, stir them, bring people across their path, solidify this within their hearts. That they will make their calling an election show. So you will pray. That's the one side. But the other side of the prayer, you can also be a part of. You can be the one that answers, be the answer to that prayer. You can pray, Lord, send laborers into your harvest field, and then you can answer, Lord, I will be the laborer. I'll be the one. And this is not like Pastor Matt said when he spoke about worship. Worship is a lifestyle. It's a way of living. It's what we do every day. In other words, it's not an event. It's not something I schedule on my calendar. It's a way of life. It's just what I'm about. I'm about my father's business. He came to seek and save that which is lost. So he's very intentional. Right. And so no matter where you are, what you are doing, it could be in McDonald's, it can be in Walmart, it can be at the gas station, it does not matter where you are, there will be an opportunity that God would create for you yes. to share Jesus. Yes. And the eternal destiny of a man and a woman will be determined in that moment yes. when you open your mouth. Amen. How powerful is that? Amen. And so the real Victoria got, last night, God, God really shared, and every time I hear that, and I hear her speak of that, my heart is touched in a very profound way every time. Because she articulates the heart of God mm. when one person dies without Jesus. God does not want any man to perish, but all come to the saving knowledge yes. of the Lord. So you and I have the amazing opportunity to be the answer to the other part of that prayer. To say, Lord, how do you know? And initially it may, it may feel or sound or look intimidating, but hey, the creator of the universe dwells on the inside of you. Yeah. The Holy Spirit has been given to empower you, yeah. to embolden you, to be a witness. Amen? Yeah. So I want to look this morning on one of the ways that we can, um, God can move you into the harvest and you can become a labor. And one of the, one of the ways that God will use you in is to use your testimony. Yes. Your testimony you don't have to rehearse. That's right. Your testimony you don't have to study. 
Your testimony is, you, you know what Jesus did for you. And that testimony is so powerful. Because really your testimony, and now we're putting that, your testimony is the Word of God made flesh. In you and through you. In other words, Jesus says, I am a Savior. I am a healer. I am a deliverer. That is what he says. And there are scripture after scripture that confirms that, right? But if Jesus comes and he delivers you and he sets you free, you become a testimonial. That word, that scripture becomes alive in you and you become a written epistle. You become like a billboard that's advertising Jesus is a deliverer and I am the evidence, the manifestation of that. When they see you, when they see your life, you put Jesus the deliverer on display. If he heal you of cancer, you put Jesus the healer on display. If he heal you from an addiction, you put Jesus as deliverer, right. as the one that is the chain breaker. Yeah. You put him on his play. Yeah. So your testimony is a very powerful tool that God will use to lead others to him. Yeah. In Revelation it says, in fact it says, and they overcame Satan by their Word of their testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Yes. Satan yes. is afraid of the testimony. Yes. He does not want you to open up your mouth right. and declare what God has done for you yes. in you. Yes. Because he's afraid of what God is going to do through you. Hallelujah. And I want to show you out of scripture the power of a testimony. The impact that it has. And so when we go today, that could be one of the ways. There are many ways that you can share the gospel. But one of the quickest ways is to share your testimony. This is who I was before I encountered Jesus. My life was heading south fast. I lost my family. I lost my job. I lost everything. Whatever it is. I was addicted. That was the point where I wanted to take my life. And then Jesus Amen. encountered Amen. me. Hallelujah. And in the one moment, my life yes. changed. Hallelujah. What doctors could not do, what a 12-step program did not do, yeah. what could not happen in 12-step, Jesus did in one step. When he came in and counted me and set me free. And now, this is post me. After Jesus set me free. Once I was blind, I encountered Jesus. But now I can see. Yes. And that is how simple it is. When you share what Jesus, if you listen to me, people can argue with your doctrine. They cannot argue with your testimony. Yes. Because it is your first hand account. Remember the blind guy? Yes. When the Pharisees came and said, Who do you think you are trying to lecture us? We are the learned leaders of Israel. You were steeped in sin. We know where Moses, about Moses, is, but this Jesus battle, we don't know him, where he comes from. And this guy said, you know what? I, I cannot argue with you on this theological, doctrinal level. Come on. I cannot speak to you on that level. You guys are so superior, far superior than what I am. He says, but this is what I know. <laughs> Once I was blind. Enough yes. 
Your testimony is the testimonial yeah. of God's power, Hallelujah. of his love, of his healing, of his deliverance. Hallelujah. And God wants to use that testimony to win souls. You, Listen to what Paul writes. Because he shared his testimony on so many occasions. You read in the book of Acts, you read it in all the letters that he writes. He shares his testimony over and over and over again. How he killed the people of the way. And then on that day on the road to Damascus, Paul, he had this one encounter with Jesus and his life was changed, right? And so he says this, Acts 20, 24. Really riveted me when I read that. He says, however I consider my life worth nothing to you. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. Listen, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Wow. This guy says, my only ambition, I've got nothing to live for. Every day when I wake up and when I go to bed, this is my ambition in life. To testify of God's grace. That's all I live for. That is why I'm on earth. That is my highest pursuit. The testimony of God's grace who came and visited me and revealed to me the riches of his mercy and his grace, not just for me, but for every sinner. He says, I make it my ambition to go out and testify. And that can be true of you and I. Starting small, starting where you are, starting in your sphere of influence with your friends, with your colleagues. your family, in restaurants, waiters, waitresses, yes. tell them you're not going to pay the bill unless you, they know you're praying for them, they know you're praying for them, <laughs> hold them hostage, <laughs> and it better, I know somewhere they, at times they, they, they advertise, don't pick up hitchhikers, right, but, but pick up a hitchhiker. And just begin to speak. Yes, yes, yes. I drive like 120 miles an hour. Oh, I was like, listen, if we should crash and die, we you go. <laughs> okay, we can settle that kind of very quick. All right, I'm going to slow down and I'm going to do the Jesus. Well, I'm, gonna... I'm just kidding, right? But, but listen, let's. The Bible says, let's make the most of every opportunity yeah. because the yeah. days of evil. Amen. Again, bear in mind, the harvest is plentiful. The laborers are few. Yeah. There's not a shortage of people wanting to accept Christ. A shortage to the workers. Mm. Your testimony is a weapon. It's a tool. It's a catalyst that God wants to use. Don't be like the guy who received the one talent. And bury your testimony like he buried his talent. Put Jesus on display by sharing what he's done for you. And I will show you how powerful that is. Once you begin to see God use that, wow, it's contagious. Your testimony is the Word of God and the Holy Spirit in action. We say that again. Your testimony is the Word of God and the Holy Spirit in action and put on display. Or I wanted to go to... Um, Three reasons why the testimony is powerful. The first reason. God 
God will use a testimony to bring others to salvation. Remember the man who lived in tombs, the man, the demoniac? The Bible says, when Jesus asked him, how many devils are inside of you? He said, legion. It's a, it's a military term which refers to up to 6,000 soldiers. So this guy has 6,000 devils inside of him. No, with any wonder that he was out of his mind, raving mad, stark naked, living in tombs. They tried to bind him with chains and they could not do that. When he encountered Jesus, just one encounter, one encounter, and watch this. Jesus told his disciples, let us go over to the other side for one person. He did an overseas trip for one person who other people probably would have institutionalized if he was now there. He went after one. Not counting the cost, not counting the time, not counting the inconvenience. Because a soul is precious to the Lord. 6,000 deaths. One encounter with Jesus, and he was set free. The Bible says there were 2,000 pigs. They were allowed to raise pigs because it's an unclean animal, right? So three devils per pig, three apiece. The pigs had more sense than human beings. They said, uh -uh. <laughs> not for a second. <laughs> we are rather going to commit suicide than be a temple for devils. And they ran out of the down themselves, right? And here this man sits in his right mind, clothed, Completely well. And so this is where the story is where I want to focus on. He says, Jesus, now that I've been delivered, now that I have been set free, I would like to join your ministry. I'd like to go with you, become one of your disciples, and I want to learn from you because I am new in all of this. I want to do what you did. I want to do all of these things. Heal the sick, cast out devils. I'm a baby. I'm an ignoramus. Please, I want to join your ministry. The Bible school of the day. Taught by the rabbi himself. And you know what Jesus said to him? No. He said, your testimony is enough. He said, your testimony is so powerful. He says, in fact, there are ten cities that's waiting to hear what Jesus has done for you. And this man went back to his family, to his friends, and the Bible says, the Decapolis. He went to the city, ten cities, and proclaimed only his testament. And the Bible says, many, 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 many were saved. Samaritan woman, number two. Five husbands she had. Living with a sixth guy now. Jesus waits for her to well, and as she comes, she passes this handsome Jewish rabbi, and she's like, possibly husband number seven. Look, she had a hole that no love of a man could fill. That's right. 
or taking them over that she had an appointment with destiny. And one drink from this master would make her thirst no longer. When she took that drink, the Bible says she forgot her water pot at the well. Ran back to the city where she came from with only her testimony and began to testify what Jesus did for her. And this is how that story ends. I'd like to read it. John 4, 39 to 42. This is how the story that of that encounter ends. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in Jesus because of the woman's testimony. That he told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to Jesus, they urged him to stay with them and he stayed two more days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They then turned to the Samaritan woman and said, We no longer believe just because of what you said. But now we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this man, Jesus, is the Savior of the world. In other words, what they're saying is, your testimony was the gateway, was the doorway to bring us into our testimony. Your testimony introduced us to Jesus. Your testimony brought us into an encounter with Jesus. But we don't need your testimony anymore. Because of your testimony, God gave us our own testimony. And now we can say that Jesus is not just your Savior, but he's my Savior. So your testimony has the power To do what Jesus did for you. For him to do in the life of others. Amen. The second reason. So the first reason why your testimony is powerful. It can bring people to salvation. Like the man. That was full of the demons. No prior experience. No Bible school training. No foundation school. None of that. Just his destiny. Go and preach to ten cities. Declare what Jesus did for you. Amen. Samaritan woman, outcast, branded by her community, all of a sudden when she walks back, her face is a glow. Something changed, and she opens her mouth and she says, Come and see a man who gave me a drink and I'm not thirsty again. That is what Jesus wants to do through your testimony. Yeah. Second reason why your testimony is powerful. Your testimony is a prophecy. Hallelujah. Revelation 19 verse 10 says, For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now you say, well, my testimony and the testimony of Jesus, why is it says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Why do you say my testimony is? Well, every time when I'm testifying, it is Jesus standing up on the inside of me and he's testifying that I am Savior. Amen. I am deliverer. I am healer. So your testimony is really giving a voice to Jesus. And when he testifies, it releases the spirit of prophecy over all those who would hear. And I will show you our scripture. Matthew chapter 9, verse 20 to 22. It's the, it's the woman with the issue of blood, suffering for 12 years. Spent all the money on doctors, and they left her without a cure and left her penniless. 
One day she hears, faith comes by hearing. And that's why the testimony is also so important. Because when you speak, it builds faith. She was hearing, this Jesus opens up the blind eyes, opens up deaf ears, raises the dead. He does miracles. She heard this and faith came into her heart for her own situation. And the Bible says she began to whisper, if only I can touch the hem of his garment. Day in and day out in the house. Remember, she was not allowed to go out because she would defile people who had been unclean. But in her house, she'd be walking around in all night. One day her faith rose up because faith and love works is dead and gave action to her feet. And she goes to Jesus and there it is. Just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years who said if only I can touch his cloak I will be healed. She touched him, and then Jesus turned and saw her. And he said, take heart, daughter. Your faith has made you well. So powerful was this, Jesus was preaching. Talking to the crowd here, she was like coming from behind and said, Jesus, I'm not going to disturb you, you know, just carry on with your business. I'm just going to take what I need. You don't have to lay hands on me, you don't have to see me. Snakes are behind, so convinced that what she came for, she's going to get. She's like, boom, just like, whoa. And she went away. Jesus had no choice. But to release it to her. Because without faith it's impossible to please God. Faith is the currency of heaven. Yes. That releases every heavenly gift and every spiritual deposit. By faith we can take it. Jesus had no control over that healing. She knew the secret. To just take it. I thought this is where the, heat, the, the story ended. I thought this is, I mean, this is an amazing miracle. But then I went on to Matthew 14. And I was absolutely astounded. It was 34 to 36. Matthew 14. 34 to 36. We're talking about your testimony is a prophecy, right? In other words, what God has done for you when you share it, you are actually declaring that He can do it again. You're prophesying. When you're speaking to somebody, this is what Jesus did for me. You are actually setting them up and declaring to him that he's able to do the same and if not more to you. He can do it again and again and again and again. You are prophesying. So your testimony is a vital force. It's a prophetic weapon. It is a catalyst that God will use to promulgate and to perpetuate, meaning to let it continue, happen over and over and over and over again, as long as you have faith and you release the word out of your mouth. Yes, yes, yes. So watch this. Matthew 14, 34, 36. And when they had crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret. Talk about the disciples and Jesus. And when the men of that place recognized Jesus, 
They sent word to all the surrounding country. Then people brought all the sick to him. And here is the king. And they begged him to let the sick touch the edge of his garment. And all who touched it were healed. Here is my question. When did Jesus teach? Touch the hem of my garment if you want to be healed. Where did they get that from? It was when the woman went back home. She connected to her Wi-Fi. And she posted on Facebook. Jesus just healed me from this 12th year. And that testimony went viral. That people began to say, wait a minute. If he could do it for you, then he could do it for me. We are going to copy and paste. Yes. Your healing yes. and take that for us. Yes. Isn't it powerful? Yes. 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 One woman and that and that Bible says a woman. She had no identity when she arrived there. When she left, she was called daughter. That's major. But one woman now affects through her testimony an entire region. A healing revival breaks out based on a testimony of a woman. There's no telling how many thousands we heal. So a testimony is a prophecy. God can do it over and over and over and over again. I'm saying this today so that you can know what you have in your possession. Your testimony is powerful. It is unique to yours. It is, it is, it is like it is. It is like your fingerprint in the spirit. Nobody else has it. They may have similar testimonies, but your your testimony is unique. It is like your DNA signature in the spirit, and only you can tell. I can tell it, but it will be second. But when you release it, yeah. wow. Yeah. So cool. so cool. No wonder Satan wants to keep you quiet. Or even belittle, or berate, or make your testimony to be insignificant. Open wide your mouth. Yeah. And begin to share what Jesus did for you. And watch how he will turn water into wine. Watch he will stop um, blood issues. Watch how he will break addictions. Watch how he will heal cancers. Watch how he will restore marriages. Watch how he will stop suicides. Watch how he will turn lives around. You do not know, need to know the Greek. And the Hebrew. That's right. Just share your testimony. Amen. Praise God. The last reason, the third reason why your testimony is powerful. It's a weapon of warfare. It's a weapon of warfare. 
I mentioned it before, but in Revelation 11, 12 and 11 says, they overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. Yes. Yes. Your testimony, Satan does not like. It's power every time you testify, every time you speak, every time you declare a testimony. It is warfare against the kingdom of God. So I'll show you how. If you go to John chapter 12, verse 9 to 11, I pre preface this by John chapter 11. I'll just give you a quick synopsis. So this is Lazarus that is sick and then he dies. And Jesus goes and he raises him up. And so, the next day, imagine, guy that's dead for four days. Just as he's stinking, body decomposing. And four days ago, there was a funeral. People weeping. Fourth day, this guy, is having lunch. So the Bible says people began to come to see this testimony for themselves. Because he's not the embodiment of what Jesus did. When Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life, Lazarus is the manifestation of that word. He is the he's, he's life, he's right there. He's the proof. So watch this, verse 9 to 11, verse 12. <laughs> Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and they came. Not only because of him, but also to see the testimony, to see the answers. We had raised from the dead. Now so watch this. So the chief priests, these are the ones who killed, planned to kill Jesus, who were really instruments in the hand of Satan, right? So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. Another way of putting it, they made plans to kill or to silence the testimony. For on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in him. So Satan said, let's get rid of this testimony. Let's get rid of this evidence that Jesus is the resurrection and the life, that he can heal, that he can restore, that he can deliver. Let's get rid of this testimony because through this testimony, others will come to know Jesus. Your testimony is a weapon of warfare to plunder hell and to rob Satan of his goods. He doesn't like your testimony. He wants to silence your testimony. But here is the deal. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Greater is he that is within you than he that is in the world. Amen? Amen. And so it is important for you and I to, to know the power that we have in Christ. Uh, and the power that is given us through this destiny. So what I'm going to do right now, we are going to um, break up into pairs of two. And I want you just to share with the person, make it um, three minutes, tell them, share your testimony with them. Something preferably that you don't know. What your life was before Jesus. What the encounter was when you met Jesus. And what your life is like now. Is that good? Yes. Alright, let's stand up. Let's take a break for about, I would say five minutes, stretch your legs. And then we're going to come and we're gonna, we are going to do that. Come back and just pair up in, teams of, in, in, in pairs of two. We're going to have invited team to come to Costa Rica. 
We minister in schools. We need thousands of people to Jesus, right? And so I had this one lady. She's like a medic. She says she's like under a medical doctor. I don't know what you call that. Mid level, like a nurse practitioner. Yeah, she's like she's just like just under. So she's like you know, and Gregor. But she was um, somewhere in this hospital, a, a doctor um, abused her. Her uh, father was a pastor, abused little boys. And she had all this, this horrendous stories. She was almost out of it. She was still somehow in, in, in pain and, and God dealing with her identity. But she was coming out of that. And she was at the point where she could begin to testify and share with the Lord. But she was not quite there. But she came on this trip. And so she stood in front of elementary school students. And she was like just, uh, she had 15 minutes to speak. And 12 minutes of the 15 minutes, she was going on of how her father abused her and how he abused kids and, and all of that. And just two minutes of what Jesus could do. And I had to redirect her and say to her, that is not the focus. The focus is what Jesus has done for you. But this is what happened. She was so in love. Please listen to what I'm saying. With telling her story, please listen to what I'm saying. She has been telling her story over and over again in the past, not as a testimony, but for people to garner sympathy. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. That when she got to the point where she was testifying, she was not testifying for a point of victory, but she was testifying to just share her story. Almost in love with the story. Wow. Almost like the guy at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years, where the Amplified Version says, Jesus, when he saw it, said, um, How serious are you about getting well? And so, what I want to tell you when you share your testimony, you really want to state the problem. But your real focus, your message is Jesus. He is the healer. This is what he did for me. When that woman left the well, everybody knew her already. She said, come and see a man who changed my life. And that is really where you're going. So that's what I'm saying. When you're sharing your testimony, if it's a three minute deal, let him know, this is where I was. I was bound. I was messed up in my mind. Da, 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 da. Pop, Jesus. You want, to, you want to say what your condition is, but when you speak about him, you want to elevate that part of the testimony so high that he stands mountainously high above the problem. We do not want to magnify the problem. We want to magnify Jesus as Lord over the problem. Because that is what we are presenting today. I'm not, I'm, when I present my testimony, I'm presenting in reality what Jesus did for me. So that's why I'm saying keep it in balance when you share your story. There will be other times that you might have an hour or two hours. You know, that you can really fill in the gaps and color it in and, and get all the nuances and give dates and history and just tell stories in that how, you know, I was helping with the gun, whatever. But in reality, you want to focus on Jesus. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, so let's switch places. Um, and the other person that was the listener will now share. Um, share what you shared with each other and um, so just do that for the benefit of the entire congregation. It's 12, 10, you've got five minutes. I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see she's you know I got a lot of mouth. <laughs> I think it was, let me see, she remembers date more. Years ago, uh, 
Okay, so let me let me let me just you stop you in the track now. So you are now speaking to somebody on the street. Okay. You're not speaking to them. Oh, I'm not speaking to them. Yeah. You're sharing. No, your, back to your, 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 you're sharing your testimony. Uh -huh. Let's let's make it that way. Wade is Wade is a is a drug addict. He's a uh, 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 or he's a, or he's just a, anybody. It could be a rich businessman. Yeah. You know. Just tell your story to them. Five minutes, nine minutes. Five minutes, nine minutes. Oh, yeah, nine minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah. just right. to say, hey, hey, introduce yourself. I'm here. Come How on. you going, man? My hey. name's Max Yoga. How you doing, Dave? Good. Can I give you my testimony? Sure. Oh, okay, <laughs> let me stop you right there. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is a. Uh, he, he's not only a, a, a businessman and addict, but he's actually a Muslim, so he doesn't know what his testimony. What is that? Oh, okay. Can I tell you my story? Yeah, yeah, you must, okay. My story. All right. Amen. That's good. Uh -huh. Amen. Can I, can I tell you my story about what my Jesus done for me? Have you ever heard oh. Jesus? <laughs> oh, 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 the woman runs to the city, back to the city, and she says, Can I tell you, can I show you my testimony, what Jesus did for me? No. She didn't say that. She said, Come and see a man. You want to shut this guy down? Go that route. Now, it might work with somebody that grew up Baptist and is now vaccinated. Uh, you understand? But it's not going to work with everybody. So we want to make you a man for all seasons, to be all things to all men, that we are with some. So it's your story. Don't mention Jesus yet. I want to tell you about someone who transformed my life. So now this guy's like, huh? <laughs> he's, he's talking. Who is this person? That must be like somebody very special. So you understand what I said about at the end? Okay. So let me, let me reset the clock. <laughs> We're going to reset the clock. So uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because this is really for the benefit of all of us. I'll tell you what. Where's our guy? Both of you have got the same thing. Christianity is not a religion. And many times we have Christianese, like Chinese, like Christianese, right? That we speak. It's a language that we speak amongst each other. And we understand it. You get out there. The guys say, from what planet are you guys from? Because they just don't speak that way. When I bring people on the mission field and I take them into public schools and public arenas, invariably they are so out of their comfort zone because the only people that they're spoken to is church folk. Yeah. So they're trying to duplicate a church service and a church kind of thing that they get going in a context that is completely heathen. Gentile, yeah. unchurch, yeah. there is no frame of reference for any of our terminology. That's true. That's so good. Mm. And the people are just lost. I mean, they are lost, but they gravitate to what they know. Right. So here is the deal. We're going to speak conversational. We're not going to speak Christianese. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Want to tell you, glory, hallelujah. Woo, woo, woo. Not that. Stay on your feet now. Be grounded. Okay. We're not going to talk. We're going to try and take that terminology and put it into words yes. that they would understand. That's good, yeah. So let's do a reset. Five minutes. Can I tell you my story? 
How you going today, man? Hey, Mr. Shelby, bro. Looks like you're having a little rough time today, man. <laughs> Doing all right today? Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, I have something in bed too, man. Can I can I tell you a little story? Sure. So year, years ago, me and my wife we were having a lot of problems. Uh -huh. So I went, went decided to go to the ballroom, cheated on my wife. Mm -hmm. Wasn't the best decision. Um, looking around, see people getting stabbed. The woman I was with decided, well, let me back up a little bit. She was somebody that I played uh, music in a rock band, mm -hmm. in the ballroom. Drummer's ex-wife, you know. We ended up getting together, and I had a picture of Crown and Coke. Took one sip, and the woman was back to me, you know. What's the matter? You ain't drinking. I said, nah, it's, it's all good. Just looking around and waited a while, you know. And some change, some click. Um, and I think it was the Holy Spirit. You ever heard of the Holy Spirit? No, I've never heard of the Holy Spirit. Jesus. What's that? It's Jesus. Okay. What's Jesus? Jesus is, Jesus is God in the flesh. All right. He came down and he hit me like a ton of bricks. Mm. Okay. I mean, I grew up Catholic all my life. We got drugs from to church. The only time I went to church, funerals and weddings. Mm. Wow. The only thing I knew about Catholic, but Catholic church, Jesus. Stand up, sit down, kneel down. That's the whole thing. When I met Jesus, though, me and my wife was actually going signed divorce papers. We had three boys. My youngest one was, I don't know, I can't remember. She she remembers all the dates. You know, they've been around two. Go on signed divorce papers. And God just turned all that around. Wow. Now it's 23, that was in 2000. Mm -hmm. All right, 23 years we've been back together. All right. All right. Still have our struggles, like everybody does, you know, but yeah. I just figured I'd like to share that with you. Yeah, man. Thank you. Can I meet you, Jesus? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. All right. Wait up. You want to you share? Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Good job. Hey, how you doing today, sir? All right. How are you? Wait, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Uh, may I share something with you today? Yeah, go ahead. Well, you see, about 20 years ago, I had many problems. I've been to prison. I did about 12 years in prison, 13 different facilities. I lived a rough life. Uh, things wasn't always good with me. I mean, I may be dressed nice today, but it wasn't always that way. You know, when I think back on my life, um, I come from a place where um, nothing was really given to me or handed down to me. If I wanted something, I wouldn't make it happen. So that lifestyle led me in a place where it was uh, tough. You know, all the decisions I made in the past were just bad and it, 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 did, it, wasn't, it wasn't very prosperous for me. And through those 12 years, I would often think back and say, there got to be a better way. Ooh. And many nights pondering that thought, there got to be a better way, I came to the conclusion that after hearing all these other stories in life about how this man named Jesus has set him free, that if I would give him a chance, if I would call on his name, could he set me free? Mm -hmm. And there was one, one night, like most of these stories I heard in the past, that I, I got down on my knees and I cried out to his, I cried out to, to God and he had set me free. And that's, that, that's my story in a nutshell, that Jesus not only set me free, but he, he placed my feet on solid ground. And this is where I stand today. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry.
Very good, Wade. And um, what's your name? Shelby. 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 Praise God. Amen. Awesome. Always remember that our audience is not Christian. Yeah. And so we want to take the story in a language that they would understand. Yeah. Um, and I think when we think, Wade, if you think your story, if you think your story through, your te uh, testimony through a little bit more, I think it's good for us to write it out, you know, to say, okay, really, what was, what was, what was I after? What was I pursuing? I was looking for this, 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 this. And I tried to find it in this. But this was the result. This was the consequence. I ended up in prison. With a heartbroken with a family um, that deserted me. Whatever the situation. And then I heard these constant testimonies of people who had similar situations. And Jesus changed their lives. And I was wondering. He can do it for them, as he did it for me. There was nobody around. But that night, I got onto my knees. I said, God, if you're real, if you can do this, then I ask you to do it for me. And in an instant, something must have happened. You must have felt a warmth or a light or peace. Let them know that. I felt a peace that I've never felt before. Like the weight of the world that was on my shoulders just rolled off. I just knew that I knew that I knew that I was free. I was still in prison. Were you still in prison? Yes. I was still in prison. I was still incarcerated. But I was more free than I had ever been. Hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's how you begin to just say. And my life was completely changed from that. Yes. Okay. So what I'm saying is not embellish your story, but build it out because there are there are trigger points, there are key points um, that you do not want to generalize. You really want to evoke and provoke those aspects that specific that these were the issues that i dealt with in my life growing up it was this i did not have a father i was looking for love do you understand what i mean i was pointing out spelling out and so i went outside of my home i joined a gang i wanted influence i wanted riches i wanted money i wanted to be seen i wanted to be important all of those things people understand but I went to look for it in the wrong places. And it brought me to one. Okay. All right, two ladies. Yeah, so my whole life, I don't really remember when I got saved. Because I was saved really young. Sure. Um, I went to Christian school my whole life. Ex well, I say my whole life. Yeah, my whole life. Because ninth grade, I got expelled. But when I went to ninth grade, <laughs> I went to high school. And it was public school. And... That changed my life. I didn't know what anything was in eighth grade, you know, and then I took off. <laughs> it was in drugs. Wow. Every, everything. And wow. um, I don't really know. No. Just tell uh, your story. You're doing great. Just you, This is what I want to say. Just This is what I want to say. Sorry. Let me, let me just say this. When... This, I heard somebody say public speaking. Yes. Um, I, okay, this, it may be that, but it's, it's not that. All right, listen. You are not trying to perform. This is not a performance, no. so it cannot be wrong. Right. Right. If it's a performance, you have an expectation. Mm. Oh, I'm, what must I say? And I, I, I'm just not mm. saying the wrong thing. And it's not a performance. You are just talking having a conversation about your life. Right. 
And so you are actually giving us the privilege of seeing a part of you that not many people do. Okay, it's your story. Just let us let us in. Just tell your story. It's, you're not performing. It's you're not. There's not an oratory class or an oratory performance. Just tell your story. Let us hear. Uh, tell us. Tell us about your life. That's it. Well, and then let's see if I can remember when I got me and my husband got together. We decided to give our life to the Lord. It was either. We were going to be together, or we was going to give our life to the Lord. Well, we got on our knees together and we prayed, just desperate for the Lord that at that point. And the Lord changed us immediately. Took everything from us. We didn't do drugs, drink, didn't even smoke cigarettes after that. You know, um, He took everything from us. We can, moved out sorry, here. can I ask you a question? I'm just saying yes. this because I'm curious because I think there's something that's that's powerful that we want that I want to know as mm -hmm. your listener. You're saying you guys were desperate. Desperate. Why are you saying that? Because I don't, we're on drugs. I don't know what that means. On drugs. So can you tell us a little bit? Why yeah. were you desperate? Why was your situation so critical that you said you had to call out to God? Tell us a little Expound on that. Well, because we were on drugs bad and alcohol. And, and what does that look like? Like yeah. uh, once a week? Oh, every day. Every day. And what would that do to you? Um, I didn't have my kids. I had my little boy, but I didn't have my girls. I had just my little boy. Why did you I have lost your girls? My, I lost my girls. I was in jail. Well, I went to jail 18 months one time, and that took one of my girls away. Now oh, that is, you, you, you know how powerful mm -hmm. that is? Yeah. Yeah. You, you did not tell us that? And I know it may be painful, but that is what you, so you are saying, you are saying the consequences of my actions have left me this. We want to hear right. that because yeah. that really is whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, that you know, devastated me. It's not like, oh, I've, I've taken a little pill from Walmart, you know? <laughs> yeah. That was the drug that I went from the drugstore. No, this is like. Yeah. yeah. So both my girls were taken away. Um, 18 months, I was in jail one time, and then 18 months right after that. So it was about. Wow. But um, when I got out that last time, I had my little boy, and he kind of changed. He changed me somewhat too. Um, but then I got back on drugs because my little boy's dad wasn't getting all the drugs. He wasn't, and then Wade came along, <laughs> and that's when wow. things started to change. Just I just knew it was the Lord because I knew from that moment on that. I was supposed to be with him, and Hallelujah. that's what, you know, really changed us. And then we moved here, and I met all y'all. <laughs> but actually, I didn't do, I did good for a while here, and then I just got out of detox. And this, this last time I did, the Lord changed me again. And yes, I got filled with the Spirit. And that has changed my world. You know, I want the Lord to do everything through me. I don't want you to do anything else but the Lord's work. Right Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, so. Amen. We can see we can see Jesus on you. Uh, yes. Any person that mm -hmm. sees you, let's say in the street, there's such a light mm -hmm. and a yes. glory on you. Yes. You are um, attractive. There is something that you have that I want. Yeah. When I look at you, you carry Jesus. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so, yeah. so that is going for you already, yes. you know. Yes. Um, and yes. so, you are basically telling us yeah. why you are. Jesus changed my exactly. world. Yeah. My yes. world. Hallelujah. And for everything, for my kids, for my marriage. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. Did that not touch you? Yes. What I liked, um, what's your name, the last lady that you heard? Jessica. Jessica. And I wanted to share that earlier, uh, but she demonstrated that. When you tell your testimony or your story, okay, let's say it happened two years ago here, and you were now present here today. I can tell my story as an onlooker 
And I'm, I'm, I'm a narrator yes. to my story to say, this is what happened. And, you know, then this happened. And, or I can actually be present in the story. And actually, I'm not telling you, I am showing you my story. So it's what she did when she begins to show the emotion. You are actually transported right there to her pain. As opposed to, oh, there are just many men and stuff like that that happened. No, no, no. You begin to see that you can, you can, you can live yourself into her experience that the first encounter left me barren, left me empty. Yeah. Then I went to another encounter. Yeah. And the more she's telling it, the more she's showing the emotion intensifying. And so part of sharing your testimony is not just telling it, it's showing it. You know, be in that moment, go back to that time that you were on drugs and strung up and desperate. Remember how you felt. Remember what you thought. Remember how you looked. Do you understand what I mean? Go back into that situation that they can slip and let them know, this is where I was. Like Wayne was saying, I'm wearing nice clothes now. But don't mistake this for where Jesus took me yes. from. Hallelujah. You know. And so your testimony is so powerful. Um, I wish we had more time, but um, I'd like us to, Pastor Aston, to share a few things. Perhaps I can do that tomorrow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, let me say this. When we share our testimony, we have to somehow connect it when it comes to Jesus. Remember, now I'm saying, um, so this is what happened to me when I encountered Jesus. My life is completely transformed. Now I'm going to say, okay, have a great day. Now, I now want to bring him to the point of closing the deal. Because that's what I'm after, right? That's what the Lord is after. He's so, he's hard. So I'm saying the same Jesus who did it for me, no matter what you are facing today, he can do it for you. Yes. Perhaps your story is not my story. Perhaps your situation is different, but whatever you're facing, my friend, the same Jesus is able to do it for you. Amen. He loves you. And now in transition to giving the gospel. Amen. My story is not just enough, my testimony, because I want to highlight, remember we said we want to magnify Christ. Amen. And so we have to let him also know what Jesus did for him yes. in order for him to be saved, in order for him to be delivered, in order for him to be set free. So right there we give the gospel. I'm going to just very quickly share that. So, so the gospel is what? It's good news. Yes. And what, just let's encapsulate it. Just let's go around the room and just say, if I'm going to share the gospel in a nutshell, what am I going to say, wait, to that person? Just in a nutshell. God's love. God's love. So what are you going to tell me? I'm listening to you right now. You are sharing with me. You are in prison. You fell on your, on your face. You, and God touched you. And now you say, you telling me he can do the same for me, and now you tell me about God. Okay, tell me. Okay, you know the way, right? Just for a second. Wait, come. Tell me. Say it one more time. So, in other words, you now want to keep the gospel to me. Yeah. Tell me. What does Jesus who did for you? You want to tell me that he can do it for me. Now, tell me already what he did on the cross. 
Uh -huh. So, what what Jesus done for me is um, I cried out to His name, right. and when I cried out to Him, He saved me. Right. And you know, um, all you have to do is call upon His name. Yeah. The Bible says. Um, he who believes and calls on his name shall be saved. So, so it's as, as simple as just saying, Lord, save me. Mm -hmm. um, you can pray a prayer, but all you have to do is ask the king uh, and he will save you. Yes. Um, just like the thief on the cross, he said, Master, or he said, he, he, I don't know what he said, but he mm -hmm. said, um, remember me when you go to your kingdom, right. when you enter your kingdom. And he says, today you will be with me in paradise. Yes. So it's, it's, there's many ways you can call upon the name of Jesus. But all you have to do is just say it. Beautiful. Wonderful. My sister. No, he said exactly. No, no, I want to hear you right now. So we're going to do our belong. You tell us your version. First off, he doesn't want you to get things to come to him. He wants you to come as you are. Okay. And I was the same. Uh, I have an aunt that was a minister, and I was smoking, smoking cigarettes. And she told me, she said, you know, Kathy, you can quit smoking. I said, oh, wait, turn our kids. She says, she never raised her head. And she says, you can quit. She said, all you got to say is, Lord, take my life. Oh, I said, oh, you too, I can't say that. Well, two weeks later, honey, I wasn't smoking anymore. Every time I tried to pick it up, I couldn't smoke it. So God works in all kinds of ways, but he wants you to come as you are. He doesn't want you to get fixed first, then come. Huh. Amen. Beautiful. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> Remember that we want to mix, we want to mix the gospel, the message of the cross to your testimony. You want to combine the two. That's the man. Well, I mean, the so the quick version of the testimony is to like listening to what he's saying. I have a little testimony for it, depending on who I'm talking to, right? Like, if it's a person that's involved in hip hop, I got one for them, and if it's a person that's been on drugs, I got one for them. If it's a businessman, I got one for them. Or, pulled one out on I just realized one of the doctors I was working for she said the word <laughs> schmuck and so I said oh so you're a Jew oh I said well did you study Torah and anyway long story, story short I said but what about Zechariah 12 what about Psalm 22 what about Isaiah 53 so so it, you know there's a lot of different testimonials but in reality my story was is that my dad I tell the story a lot that he was an ex-marine and he was he was in the Hall of Fame for football. And so all of my life, I was trying to learn how to live up to what his standard was. And I was left empty, you know, very verbally abusive. And I was left em empty and full of pain. And uh, I think I was pretty, actually a pretty sweet kid. But, but, but the way that I had been treated, it left me empty and full of pain. <laughs> and whenever I got to be about the eighth grade, I started trying to fill up the void from what I had learned from him, which was drink. And I got suspended from school in the eighth grade for bringing alcohol into the school. So this is just one version of my testimony. I got multiple testimonies, right? And ultimately that ended, I'm just telling y'all that, you know, I stole my dad's car when I was 15 and ran away to California. I was a high school dropout in the 10th grade. It's a crazy story, but the point Point is is that every step that I took left me empty and broken and I started to feel more and more helpless and then finally things came to the end of itself whenever I ended up at my I had nowhere else to go uh, there, there was no other place for me to go and my sister had opened up her doors and I will never forget that she said and I use this a lot I'll tell people this uh, she, she invited me she said we have church tonight and I said it's time and, and it was actually her aunt, her aunt's church. And I showed up in that church and she kept talking about the blood. And it was very uncomfortable. Uh, she kept saying the blood, the blood. And, and, and I, I didn't understand what was going on. Now I realize now 
looking backwards that demonic spirits were trying to make. And I'll tell people that. I don't, it doesn't matter to me what they, whether they believe in the supernatural or the spiritual realm or not. I, I, they need to understand that that's what they're inviting into their life. Yeah. That's how I see yes. it. Right. To give them an opportunity to know. You know? And, I, and whenever I get on these Illuminati kind of things, I'm like, you know, y'all agree with everything I'm telling you right now. I'll tell them this in the clinic. Y'all agree with everything I'm telling y'all right now. Y'all y'all agree that these people done sold their soul to the devil. Y'all agree that the whole world's going to hell in a handbasket, but this is where I'm about to step on your toes because as soon as you walk out of here, you're going to turn the radio back on and you're going to let Jay-Z speak into your life and you're going to let Beyonce speak into your life and I'm here to tell you that the whole reason that this is going on is because they're trying to drive us away from Jesus and Jesus is the hope. So anyway, I'm kind of, I didn't need to do that. I'm sorry, sir. I'm doing a bad job. I'm not landing the plane. I'm 7,000 feet altitude. Land the plane, brother. All right, praise God. But the, but the point is, is this. Is that I was broken and I was empty and I was looking for something to fill the void. But then that night, the blood of Jesus, it transformed a lot. And I'll never forget. And that's one of the beautiful things is really about the anointing and sister shared with me when she went into a church, something similar happened to her that the minister stopped. That's a beautiful thing when the anointing hits. And that's what she said. She said, somebody in this place, you, you, you need Jesus. Yes. And physiologically, something changed. And I'll tell people this. My heart started to literally beat out of my chest. And I don't know what they do nowadays, but I know that day. I came to the altar and I kneeled at the altar. And when I stood up, it was like he said, the burden, a cement sack. It felt like I had been toting around a cement sack and it fell off. Of me. And my life has never been the same. And so in some way, shape or form, I try to use those things about how my the emptiness of life and trying the, the pain and the heartache, whether I had received it from my dad or the choices that I had made that brought me down a deeper widening you know path of destruction and that ultimately you know the, the gospel of Jesus and talking about the blood and how that talked about his sacrifice in the scripture that he used about how the wages of sin is death how you mentioned that yesterday and and praise God and that he, and that he changed me and that and, and I try to leave him with hope and a lot of times I'll do like a prayer I'll say can I pray with you mm -hmm. and and and, I, and and you know and I'll talk to them about calling on the name of Jesus but sometimes I'll just declare a prayer over their life um, there's been many times that I've been able to really lead somebody to say, repeat after me. I don't do, I'm not saying that I, I believe in that. I really do. Uh, a lot of times I, I pray a prayer. It's more like a declaration that God is going to grab a hold of them, that he's going to lead them and guide them in that. And I just believe in faith that whatever I do, I don't have to see it as much anymore. I'm, you know what I'm saying? But 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 to, to, to believe that they're not going to leave the same, that that something somewhere down the road, I might not even hear the story ever again. I might not ever see him again. But yet at the same time, somehow God oftentimes will bring it back and you do get to hear Praise God, you was going to say something. Pastors, can I share? Please, something? yeah. This is a blessing. This is the comforter showing up. He didn't know that our biggest step forward in the last couple of months was prison ministry. He didn't know that. People have been coming to me. I'm, I'm the one that's kind of getting us into the Morgan City Jail. Wow. And Brennan came to me last two, two or three weeks ago. He was mad at asking to share his testimony in the prison. Uh, we asked him to preach. They come into me and say, and Sabrina the same way. I put Sabrina over the women going into prison. This is the comforter showing up and answering all your wow. fears and questions. Oh, yeah. what, have I been, what have I been telling you? Share your testimony. Yes. Amen. None, of us are, none of us are preachers. Matt's a preacher. We can preach. Yes. I'm not a preacher, but I can testify. Yes. And I've been sharing with them. Share your testimony. This is confirmation to all those that have signed up go into the prison ministry. Amen. Amen. Your testimony is just as powerful as a preacher preaching the word of God. Yeah. Like I've never thought about the word it's uh, proclaim it's uh, 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 what's the word you used about? A prophecy. A prophecy. I've yeah. never heard that yeah. statement yeah. before but it's a prophecy. Yeah. Don't fear. I can tell you this. When me and Wade were in prison, Wade's the one that shared his faith with me. I got saved 18, 20 years ago. Wow. Radically. I'm talking about Easter weekend, Saturday morning, 
before Easter Sunday, I was reading a Catholic Bible. I closed the book. The Spirit fell in that church. I felt like I was elevated. Sure. I said, somebody's got to see what's going on. But what did me and Wade look forward to? It wasn't all services we were going to. It was the testimonies of all the people who yeah. took their time okay. to come into that prison that encouraged us. Beautiful. That's what made the difference. So don't, don't fear. Yeah. Share your Amen. story. Absolutely. God will take care of us. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Please go ahead. One thing that we said, we used to walk the yard every day, and we were walking, and we, we almost said it simultaneously. We said, if the authorities would give us the keys to get out of prison right now, we said we wouldn't go. Turn it down. We wow. would turn it down. That because God we knew to do something in us. We knew God was doing something in us. That weekend, I got saved. Yeah. Praise Radical. The Lord. Let me one, 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 one last thing. Sorry, one last no thing. thing. One last thing. <laughs> we were at the we were at the water fountain. And I told Robert, I said, I don't know what it is, Robert, but the Lord is going to use us to do something wow. in the future. And I really didn't. Robert was fixing to leave. He was going to his next journey. And I just, God gave me that prophecy. And 20, now this is what I want you to hold on to. 20 years later, we would meet up again. And... God would form a company and bless us beyond our Amen. expectations. Oh, wow. More than we, we could ever dream, think, or even imagine. Yes. We pray every day that he gives us opportunities to share our faith. Yes. Every day we pray that prayer. Wow. Praise, Praise God. God. So if God gives you a word, you hold on to it. It may not come to pass that day, That's right. that month, that year, but God's word will not come back to him oh, boy, it but it will accomplish yes. what it is intended. Oh, yes, it will. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, let's give the Lord a hand of prayer. Just quick, you also share with them. That's another way that we can do it. So the prayer of salvation. So I would say to them the following. So if you're ready, I'm going to lead you in a very simple prayer that you can repeat after me. Okay, and this is typically the prayer that I'll give them. And I would say, please repeat after me, Lord Jesus. Please repeat after me, everybody. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner in need of your forgiveness. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins and for giving me eternal life. I now open my heart and I receive you. As my Savior and Lord, in your name I pray. Amen. Simple as that. It does not have to be that exact prayer, but it's important. Lord Jesus, forgive my sins. I receive your Savior. You can even add wash me or cleanse me in the blood. You know, but when you acknowledge Him as Savior, you acknowledge everything that He's done for you on the cross. Amen. Amen. And so you can believe it in your heart, confess it with your mouth, you will be saved. And so that would be a typical way to start to lead someone to Jesus. Amen. Way it's got to um, attract, which is another way that you can you can perhaps engage us. But if you want to go through that, well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but can you let them know that we got, well, I'm going to just bring them to the thing. I'm going to bring them to the thing and then we'll, Hand some out for those that so want to go out. Leader, family, yeah. So, 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 what we can do, what we'll do is let's say he's meeting me, he says, Hey, I want to give you something, you know, and then you can about just go through. Yeah. Yeah. So, just yeah. tell me what it's about. Yeah. Okay. Hey, how you doing today? Hey. Wait. Solomon. Hey, hey, can I go over this, uh, this little brochure I'd like to share with you? Absolutely. Today? Okay, great. Um, everybody knows about eternity, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, look. Uh, I wrote this thing up right here, and I'd like to go over it with you. Sure. So basically what it says is, how long is eternity? 
Like forever. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. But basically, this is a little analogy I put on uh, the front of this um, brochure. Uh -huh. If an eagle would fly down every day and lower its wings to, gra to graze a five by five solid cube of concrete, and when that concrete would be totally eroded with nothing left, then eternity just began. Wow. Now, have you ever heard of the termination born again? I think I did. Yeah. Okay, well, great. Um, if you didn't, um, in this little brochure, it basically uh, gives an explanation of what this <coughs> means, born again. Where we spend eternity matters to God. God made a way so we, we could be with him forever. All he requires is us to be born again. Um, right in this little pamphlet, it says an explanation of born again. Born again might be a strange term for some people who don't know Jesus. Even the religious leader of his day did not understand this term. Jesus said we must be born again to see the kingdom of God. That's, first, that's John 3.3. 3. When Jesus was talking to one of the religious leaders, he gave an example of two different births. One being a physical birth and the other being a spiritual birth. John 3, 5, and 6. Every human on earth has been born through, the, through a natural way. However, not every human has been born spiritually. To be born, to be born spiritually, one must believe God's plan for salvation, and this is his plan. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. In another place it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. In another place it says that if we that if we would confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart, God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now, if you believe that today, I'd like to pray a prayer with you that would lead you into salvation. Would you? Absolutely. I okay. Want, I want that. Thing. Okay. Well, could you just repeat after me these words? Right. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father. I come to you in the name of Jesus. I come to you in the name of Jesus. I'm sorry for my sins. I'm sorry for my sins. The way I've lived. The way I've lived. The things I've done. The things I've done. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. And cleanse me with your blood. And cleanse me with your blood. I confess, I confess with my mouth, with my mouth the, Lord Jesus. the Lord Jesus, and I believe, I believe with, my heart, with my heart that God raised Jesus, God raised Jesus from, the from the dead, and I make him, and I make him Lord, of my life. Lord of my life, and according to your word, according to your word that cannot lie, cannot lie I'm, washed, I'm washed, I'm cleansed, I am saved. I am saved. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, so that is available. Wait. Sorry, that is available. Yes. So that is another means that we can go um, and just engage people if you want to use the track. So that's not track and testimony. It could just be a direct the track, could just be your point of contact. Like, hey, I'd love to leave this with you. It's got uh, a message. Do you mind if I go through this with you and then just go like the way did it, you know? The last thing I want to mention, which is also another way of winning somebody to Jesus, is Mark chapter 16, starting verse 15 through to um, uh, 18, talks about the Great Commission. He says, for those who believe, these signs will follow them. And now he's talking about the power as the of the gospel, the demonstration as they They will lay hands on the sick, cast out demons, right? Speaking tongues, all of those things. I want to zero in just for the sake of um, uh, brevity on those on the one aspect, verse 18, where it says, and you will lay hands on the sick. Can you put that up, please? Mark. 16 verse 18. So this is part of the gospel. Remember in, in, in Matthew chapter 10, Matthew chapter 9, when Jesus gave authority and power to his disciples, he says he gave them authority to go preach the gospel, the, the gospel of the kingdom, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead. 
cast out demons. He gave them authority to do that. So this is the same authority that we've been given. I just want to zero in on the last aspect of the demonstration um, of laying on of hands. So what does it say? They shall lay hands on the sick and pray for them and they shall recover. Amen? Let me read that again. Read with it. They shall lay hands on the sick and pray for them and they shall recover. Amen? No. No. What does it say? So you are saying to me that Jesus is saying, when I go and I do this, they should be healed. Yes, that's right. Okay, who's got pain right now? Who's got pain in your body? Just quickly. Okay, come. Cool. You've got pain in your knee right now? He said it was surgery in October. Sometimes it does that. so long. You've got pain right now? You have? You have pain right now? Where is it? Both knees. Okay, both knees. Okay. <laughs> So is this going to stand here and face the black here and face So let's keep that scripture up again. They shall lay hands on the sick and pray for them and they shall be healed. Amen? Amen. No. 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 You see, you see, for years, we the church have said to Jesus, oh, Jesus, that can't be right. I mean, we'll lay hands on the sick, but you're missing a part there. Lord, we have to also pray for them in order for them to be healed. Now, this is not the only verse in the Bible that talks about healing. James, for example, says, Is anyone sick amongst you? Call the elders of the church. They will launch you with oil, and the prayer of faith yes. will make well the sea. And if there's any sin, it will be forgiven. And that is true. But we're not talking about that. That's not the context. This is the context which is outside. It's part of the Great Commission. What is your what is your issue? Man? What was your do you have pain? You have lupus. You have pain right now. You have pain? Where is your squish? Okay. All right. So what we're going to do, either Jesus is the truth or he's the lie. When the Lord began to reveal, just not reveal the mission, but when I read the scripture, I said, you know, wait a minute. You tell me we can just lay hands on the sick? Yes. I began to teach this. I began to demonstrate that in trainings all over the world. One situation we had a guy that walked up past the man. He came up to the uh, he came up for prayer. There were like twenty people lined up. One guy was paralyzed. He had a stroke, half of his body was paralyzed. So he was dragging himself up like this. Somebody that has never prayed was a 14 year old. Never prayed for healing. Just came up and laid hands. Holy hands. <laughs> His body was straightened up. He walked up to the stage and testified. As somebody that had irregular heartbeat. <clears throat> it was like an electric shock. I saw it. Somebody that never prayed, another person never prayed. I think we were like 12 or 12 years old. Laid hands. No prayer. We were in Galilee last week. I say Galilee, but it's Galilee. Um. <laughs> I go there and I want to learn to walk on the water, and I go to Galilee. Galilee. So we were in Galilee, and there was this guy. He is recorded. I mean, it was crazy. I called the youth up. 
They were from what ages? Like the youngest? Uh, 10 to probably about 18. <coughs> Call them up from the stand. Because they were like freaking out. Yes. I was telling them what can happen. I said, they're going to almost use you like, really? Yes. So here was this guy. Is um, had this neck issue for years and years. He could not move his neck. If he turns, he has to turn his body to the right, turn his body to the left. And so we were recalling this of a pastor was. This was the pastor's personal friend, so he knew him and for many years. He know how long this was, like years and years, probably ten years that he had this issue. This young person came, I think it was two of them that laid hands on him, and his neck was loosened. For the first time, he could move his neck. There was a lady that couldn't close her, own, uh, her hands. My wife was helping me. She couldn't close her hands for, I don't know how, it's like seven years. Her daughter was in the congregation, and her hands could only go up, up, up like, like this. Because of arthritis. This person came put hands on her. Was it not her granddaughter that did it? I think it was her granddaughter. And we could hear, oh, and her hands closed. Her daughter, she's on a red head, she jumped up. She said, That's my mother. She could never, ever do that. I'm testifying her. The place she's grown up in. And then only, what happened was, no prayer, lay hands, and they were healed. Why is this incredible as a means for, bear with me for few, one or two moments. Why is this incredible as a means for soul winning? You can go out in the streets or McDonald's, wherever, and you hear some, hey, do you have pain? You tell them, listen, I can heal you. I can heal you. Really? Yeah. You're not praying. Oh, wow. How did you do that? Jesus. Hey, we got a test. Oh. My pinky used to be like this. Yeah? And Jessica just touched it and it's back. What? Oh. I mean, look at you. I'm a rat. I'm a rat. And look at it. It was curled like I'm telling you, it was curled up. I couldn't even open it. Who's Jessica? Her. Just did it. She just did it. I seen it yesterday. I mean, you were I can see that. Yeah. Wow. She was, in a, she was in a wreck so bad she almost died. Yeah, but years ago. my pinky. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Now, now, now I, I heard you say it's Jesus. You oh. said that right? Yes. Let me qualify it. Oh. So fully accurate. It's Jesus through you. Listen, he doesn't have a body on the earth anymore. He had a body and he took that body with him to heaven. The only body he has is you. He is the head of this body. Let me, let me move this one step further. Remember Saul who became Paul? Come on, say it all. Yeah. Say it all. That is awesome. That is Remember Saul that became Paul? Yeah. Oh. What was he doing before he encountered Jesus? Persecuting Christians. He was persecuting Christians. What did Jesus tell him? Why are you persecuting my church? Why are you persecuting me? Me. me. Oh. Come on. God. Yes. That's right. He's killing Christians, and Jesus is saying, why are you persecuting me? So you and I have to understand our role in the body. We are the body of Christ in the earth. Christ is going to do nothing in the earth except through you. 
Your hands, your feet, your voice. So you are their hands, and there is a nest and the evidence right there. Could not even visit out, and it is. I could not visit out. It's you. And it yeah. is you. <laughs> I wanted to go out there so you could do it. And Wade said no. And just. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not going to do it. That's the whole point. That's the end. whole point. So, for those who believe, I actually want young, young people. Amen. The youngest here who believes. I want you to come. You believe in Jesus? You believe in Jesus? Do you believe that he can do miracles? Come here. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need, I need three more people. In fact, um, what you want to say again? Michelle. Michelle, you come. And I want somebody else to come. Two more. Come, baby. Yeah, you were wrapped in that little blanket. <laughs> Okay, one more. Jessica. Okay, Jessica, don't be greedy. Come, sweetie. Okay, now, let's go back to the scripture. Just turn around and watch it, read that scripture. All right, the last part. And they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Or well, another word is they shall be healed. Okay, read it again. What will you do? They will lay hands on the sick. That's all. Not pray. Now, if Jesus says, they will be healed, but perhaps they will be they will be healed. What you can do in your mind is you can just say thank you. Yes. Because he said they will be healed. So when I, I'm not asking for something that he said he's going to do, I'm thanking him because he already said he will. That's right. So in my mind when I lay my hands on, I'll just say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Or I can just repeat in my mind, you said you will hands on the sick, they will be healed. I'm not asking, oh, please, Lord, heal me. Please, Lord, show your father. No, I'm not praying like that. But there is no prayer here. You do not even have to open your mouth. The only thing is your intention, that you're joining with your faith. Your faith is like the outcome. Faith is the conviction or the persuasion of something hopeful, the evidence of thing. See, so you are laying your hands knowing the outcome is going to be, they will be healed. Okay, you get it? You get it? All right, so go to work. Ask them where the problem is. Ask the gentleman where is the problem, and then you put your hand where the problem is. Go ahead. Go heal it. All right, now you lay your hands on that one. Okay, young man, lay your hands where the pain is. If it's both knees, you lay hands on both knees. Yes. Hallelujah. 
Remember when Jesus was praying for the blind man? He prayed for him once and he said in Mark 8, he said, and he saw men walking as trees. So Jesus laid his hands on him for a second time and then his eyes were completely open. So if Jesus can do that twice, we can do it twice, three times, four times, five times, until, until the healing is done. So just test, go and walk around, do what you could not do. That pain should be gone. If it's not gone, you haven't done your job properly, then go and lay hands again. Is it one knee or both knees? So why is your hand on one knee and the other one in your pocket? I can tell you testimony after testimony. In fact, uh, Pastor Matt, I called the pastor back. Because I was saying to my wife, we want to have miracles verified that it's not just in the moment. So I waited for a week. I called him back. I called him. I said, I'm, I'm calling you to verify or to ascertain if people held on to their miracles. That is what I was asking. Did some people lose their miracles? Because that could happen. Like Peter walked on the water, then he said, he said, brother. Not only did they keep, are they keeping and walking in their miracles, there are more miracles that broke out. Alright. Huh? You are what they are hurting right now? Alright. Alright, let him sit down. Let him sit down. Put your hands. I want you to put your hands on it. Yes. Just put your hands on the feet. Yes. All of you. All of you. Thank you, Jesus. What is happening here? Thank you, Jesus. Still there. The pain is still there. All right, let's get some reinforcement. You come in, just come in. Put your hand. Put your hand. We just whoops, we are just laying hands. We are just laying hands. What is happening in your knees? What is the pain level now out of ten? Half of what it was? Alright. What is the pain level? Just lay hands. Don't move it like that, sweetheart. Just lay hands on it. That's fine. Just lay hands on it. Just relax. Just relax. Don't pray. You just relax. Be in receiving mode. When I say relax, that's what I'm saying. Be in receiving mode.
Either Jesus is telling the truth or he's a lie. Simple as that. And he says, you lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. What is happening to the pain? It's gone. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, sometimes you are, we are so, we're trying so hard yes. that there is no effort here because, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. Now, now you, uh, oh, I would say one may, may feel intimidated when they say oh how's it no it's still there in fact it's worse so don't don't listen to that you keep in front of you the promise you will lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed. this has got nothing to do with me because i didn't and with you because we didn't come up with it it's not our idea it's his idea it's what he said we will do so either he's just talking bubbles, or what he says is true. So I want to know it. And we know his word is true. Where's the pain? It's gone. Oh, <laughs> praise God. And I will have that grace done because I'm scheduled for surgery October 17th. And I went to the dentist because they told me I needed a teeth cleaning, but it's surgery. Okay, and I sit in a chair, and the girl that's taking my x-ray, she said, why are you here? Because your teeth don't even have black. I said, because I'm going through knee replacement. She said, you're not going through surgery. And I said, yeah, I'm scheduled October 17th. She said, God's going to heal you. I never met her before. Wow. Never. Wow. Never wow. met her before. Right. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. God is doing something amazing for you, my sister. It's more than physical healing. Yeah. Okay? More than physical healing. Uh, uh, we believe tomorrow morning God is going to add the word to you. It's Jesus. 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 What I want to show you is that this can take place out in the public, in the marketplace, without it being freaky or weird for those who are receiving the healing. Who are receiving the healing. So once, so this is the point, once they get healed, you can tell them, they may ask you, how did you do that? That is where the opening comes, we say, the secret power to my healing, or the secret to my healing power, is Jesus. Yes. Yes. Would you like to know about him? Yes. If he just healed that, do you think they're not going to receive him? No. Then you share the gospel. Do you want to accept Christ as your Savior? Mm. We'll finish the deal. Takes me back to February. Yes. How are you? Can you stand up? The pain? The pain? The pain's gone. The pain, the pain's gone. But I can still feel some clicking. All right. Now, what you need to do is switch in your mind, switch the focus. In other words, so he says that when they hands on the sick, and they will recover. So you have already now experienced um, healing. The, the pain is gone. Don't focus on the clicking. Don't focus on what is there. No, focus on what there is. You understand? Yeah. So, so can you walk a little bit? Yeah. How's that? Come on. Thank you. All right, guys. So, so when we go out this afternoon, we can do this. We can ask people, do you have pain? You can lay hands on them. Share your testimony, share the gospel, let's see if some people say. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah.